Good morning. Today we're looking at example two out of section 3.5, an introduction to solver in business calculus with Excel. We're going to use solver on a graph that is deceptive when we first looked at it. So I have my function f of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared minus 3 closed quantity times e to the minus x squared. I'm looking for local and constrained extrema on 0 to 10. Looking at the initial graph, I'm going to think there are four such points. Solver won't do what we expect, so we're going to zoom and find there are five such points. So I have my graph set up. I'm going to start and say it looks like there's a constrained minimum at 10. I'm going to guess it's actually at 8. That's close enough that it would slide downhill to the right answer. I'm going to look at solver. and say I want M18 is my Y value, L18 is my X value. I want to change my constraint to make it less than or equal to 10. I have my constraint. I tell it to solve, and it finds 10, which is exactly what I expected. Next, I want to look at this maximum here, and that's an unconstrained maximum. Again, I can start at 8. So I set up solver, do the same kind of thing. I'm going to delete my constraint. I want it to be a maximum. I can start at 10. That's a fine number because 10 will rise up to there. I solve it, and it tells me 7.38. Two, six is where I have a, a maximum. So I found these two points. Next I'm going to look at a minimum. I'm going to change this so that it definitely will slide downhill the right way. So I'm going to go at least to six. It should come downhill to a, a minimum. I want to go back and do solver. Again, this time I'm looking for a minimum, my y value, I've started, I have my x value, I tell it to solve, and it finds 2.32, my expected minimum. Next I'm looking at maximums and minimums that occur, and it seems to me that I have a constrained maximum at 3, so I'm going to set up the problem to do that. I'm first going to change my starting point to make it not 2.3, but just 2. Again, we want something that when it moves uphill, it's going to move to the correct answer. So I'd like to do solver. I want to find a maximum, except this time I'm going to make it a constrained maximum, so I want to add a constraint. My constraint is on my x value. So it's on L18. The constraint should be that it has to be greater than or equal to zero. I tell it OK. I solve. And it finds an answer that's not what I expected. It finds not zero, the end point, but it finds two point. 0.2911502, which means something interesting is happening at the graph because it reaches a maximum before I get there. I'm going to then say I need to zoom out, and so instead of doing my size from 0 to 10, well, let's just keep it so I've got the same graph. I'm looking at around 0, and I now want to go to 0.5 as my step size. And when I do that, I see there's another maximum there, so I found not a constrained max, not the end point which I was interested in, but a place that it turned around that was outside my focus. So finally I have to look at my constrained minimum, see if anything else is happening. I'm going to want to be on the other side of the bump, so instead of 2.29, I'm going to make it 
And now I ask solver to answer the question once again, except this time I'm looking for a minimum subject to the same constraints. So I have my x values in the cell M18, my y values in N18, and I want y to be greater than or equal to zero, but now I'm looking for a minimum and see if it finds the right one. And it does find the right one. What this shows with Solver is when you look at a graph, depending on your scale, you may miss features. And Solver will move to the thing that's actually there. So if you get an unexpected answer on Solver, you may want to do the equivalent of zooming in on a particular region to see if the graph is doing what you think you're doing. Graphers tend to connect points. If my points aren't close enough, I miss things. So if I went from 0 to 1, I missed it was going up and then down. Thank you.